The machine is now up and running, so next we'll start playing around with it to force out all the flaws before we press it into service. I'll run some wood, aluminum, and even steel to test out the machine, as well as all the fixturing systems to make sure it's going to do what we need it to do, and assure ourselves we didn't make too many mistakes that will inevitably surface at the most inopportune times. I'll also show you some of the additional features that may not have come up during the build. At the end of this video, I will also introduce you to our latest build. This machine now has a little sister and will be the subject of an upcoming video. We ran the mill for the first time today. We just did a little bit of milling out of maple. It's maybe kind of hard to tell, but it's just a 3D sort of hilly surface. So it was just a, a lot of light duty milling, but it basically had to run the machine for a long time. That cut ended up being um, almost two hours long. So it was a nice little break in for the machine. So we did that, everything worked perfect, no problems, nothing seemed to loosen off. I'm gonna clean up the machine a little bit and just check things over, but everything ran good, nothing got too hot. I think a pretty good run for, uh, for a first attempt, so. Next we'll move on to doing some metals and, and working it a little bit harder, but for first go, that worked out really nicely. Let's fire up the machine and start with some nice easy wood cutting to test out the first work surface. The first step is to home the machine, and I've already referenced the zero with the back left corner of the working area. This is the first of three interchangeable surfaces for this machine. It is a vacuum top I wanted to try using a shop vac as its vacuum source. We cut this 3 quarter inch MDF top on our 4x8 CNC, and it has the same bolt pattern as the machine. It also features quarter inch wide, quarter inch deep channels, leading back to the table's drain hole, which will be connected to the vacuum. The top is easily reproducible and of inexpensive material so we can treat it like a spoil board and simply make a new one when it's worn out. We also made up some simple containment guards from some plexi and little wood pieces before we sort out a dust collection system. Once it's all mounted with some M8 fasteners, we can fire up the shop vac to see if it holds. I've always wanted to try this out and I'm not sure it would work with all materials and it may not be great for the shop vac, but there may be times when this is a handy little option for quick sheet cuts. We're going to test it out with some 3 8 MDF sheet and prepare for our first cut. I'll load some code and this is just a complete nonsense cut with a few shapes and pockets that we'll be cutting from the 3 8 MDF sheet. I'm using a quarter inch two flute upcut end mill for the cut. Obviously this is not a difficult cut by any means, but it allowed us to test the surface and learn the controller before we break something when we try and push it harder. That worked well, so we'll move on to fixturing option number two, which is a standard four inch milling vise. This fastens to the machine surface with a pair of M12 Allen headed cap screws. And there are two bolt spacings available with the larger OC spacing being for a six inch vise. We will be milling another nonsense shape, this time from some aluminum square stock. As a disclaimer, this is the first time I've performed any CNC milling of metals. It is totally new to me and there's going to be a great many mistakes. I'm unfamiliar with the feeds and speeds, as well as the cam software at this point, so there was a bit of a learning curve. That awful noise you're hearing is coming from the aluminum cover panel on the Z-axis, which is only held on by two bolts and vibrating against the spindle like crazy. This was fixed when we installed the new panels. Our final step over was too aggressive and installed out the machine, followed immediately by poor code having the machine take a full depth of cut at five millimeter step over. After a couple more crashes, we were able to complete the cut. There are some issues with my code causing it not to produce radiuses and arcs correctly, but it will be a while before I figure that out. 
Next we're going to try and hook up the coolant system and try some more metal cuts. The coolant drains through that same hole we used for the vacuum system into a reservoir and pump system I borrowed from my hydraulic bandsaw. The coolant pump is controlled by the MESO and can either be manually or automatically started when the cutting cycle is initiated. After a few more crashes, we were able to at least continue the cut. We don't have much for metal cutting end mills in metric, which is the only thing we can chuck right now, so we are trying to make do with some of our wood cutting carbide end mills. You can hear that there is significantly more resonance in cutting when the gantry is traveling. We were eventually able to trace this back to the mounting locations for the dual drive screws that run the gantry. The chassis plates that the fixed bearings mount to, those are the bearings that stabilize the screw axially, flexed enough under load to cause the resonance. We assumed that those quarter inch thick steel plates would be enough, but that was a poor assumption and a design flaw. We've added some additional bracing to stabilize them, and the movement was eliminated. I'm trying to play around with some of Fusion's toolpath options, as there are a lot of them, and at this point I don't really know what's best to use, so I'm trying a little bit of everything. After we completed our mini caliper, we moved on to a little wheel. We're running some smaller tools on this one to try a little bit more detailed mill. Nothing's loosened off. Good and stiff. We were checking for playing it today just with a dial deflection gauge and even when we're reefing on it, it doesn't move, so happy with that. So we'll keep playing around with it and see what else we can do. We are going to perform one more aluminum cut before we work up the courage to try some steel. All these cuts were performed in the same day, so make no mistake, I had learned almost nothing about CNC milling metals before deciding to start over and try my hand at some steel milling. We will be making the same dome as previous, but I dialed back the bites and slowed down the machine while also hoping for the best. This spindle is in no way designed or recommended for this type of work, but I wanted to try it anyway. Luckily, we didn't open with any crashes, so aside from my feeds and speeds being way off, I thought we'd just let it rip. I've been running the spindle at full speed for all of these cuts just to get maximum power out of it and prevent stalls. Being unfamiliar with spindles and VFDs, I wasn't sure where the capabilities would line up with the demand on the power curve, so we kept it at full throttle for all of these tests. This leads us to our second big discovery in faults on this machine. It became apparent that the spindle had considerable run out, to the tune of almost three thousandths of an inch. It's not clear whether the spindle came this way, or if the series of crashes caused it, as we never checked until we were trying to trace back the source of surface finish issues and chatter. Nonetheless, that is a significant amount of run out, and is not good for neither the spindle, tools, nor the parts we are trying to create. For our last test, we installed our peg surface for one more mill. This is a 4 inch chunk of solid maple and we're using some pegs and tapered plywood blocks to wedge the material into place. Then we'll hog it out, followed by a finishing pass at a 025 millimeter step over with an 8 inch diameter bit. We've spent the last couple days playing around with the machine and we're reasonably confident we have discovered and corrected all the major issues. The last task is to make and install the proper aluminum covers so it looks pretty and if we don't do it now it'll never get done. The fitment of the panels is great and I'm super happy with the way the whole build turned out. The final test will be what kind of surface life we get out of it. It's going straight to working 60 plus hour weeks so fingers crossed it works as good as it looks. As one final touch, we've made this magnetic dust boot and mount that will hook to our collection system. The fingers are made from clear PVC so we can see our tool, and it works half decent at containing the debris. I really appreciate everyone who took the time to watch this build and I hope it provided some useful information. We now have about 2000 hours on this machine and I'll do another video talking about how it has worked for us over the last 8 months. 
This is our new machine and it was built to manufacture a specific product. It is fully enclosed and features a traveling table design, air vise, auto oiler, dustbin, and full air system all run from the same Meso controller. It's smaller, quieter, smarter, and faster at the cost of some versatility. I'm excited to demonstrate this one as well, so stay tuned.